Hey, how are you doing folks? So, for this series of videos we're going to try system design um, and the project that we're going to create is going to be just a simple web server using a database um, and then we're also going to have a front end for this uh, web server, right? So it's going to be uh, a three-tier uh, web application. Uh, front end is going to be just a static page with some JavaScript and then we have an API uh, where all the business logic is. And then we're going to have a database uh, under that, right? So three tier. But uh, to add uh, some more spice <laughs> to this project, uh, we're going to deploy it in AWS. Uh, and we're going to deploy it specifically on a Kubernetes cluster managed by AWS. So that's AWS Kubernetes uh, service, right? Um, and then uh, we are also going to make sure that we distribute um, our um, our pods such that the failure of one availability zone does not affect uh, the application and we're also going to make sure that our database is highly available um, and also all of this is going to be um, as secure as possible so we're not going to expose any of the pods or any of the uh, uh, worker nodes directly into the internet uh, we're going to be using some uh, private subnet and public subnet um, you know uh, magic <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word uh, to make this thing uh, happen. Cool? Sound good? All right, let's get going. All right, let's start off with um, uh, designing our applications architecture, right? And then we'll 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 get onto the uh, uh, environment design uh, later on. So I'm just gonna start this by uh, creating a drawing here, uh, one that we can edit at some point, right? Uh, later on uh, in our session. So uh, first of all, let's just use simple squares here, right? So uh, I want to make sure that I have uh, the uh, the API server right here, right? That's where our business logic is going to be uh, located, right? And I want to have uh, multiple copies of this, right? So I need to have uh, you know uh, multiple pods uh, so that uh, it is highly available, right? So I'm just gonna do that. Right. So API server instances are going to be right here in the middle, right? And obviously in order for, uh, well, uh, for uh, the API server to be any use to our users, uh, we would have uh, our front end uh, right here, right? So the front end is just a static, static page, sort of static page, but really uh, with uh, JS uh, put in there. Now, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the front end should not have to know the IP addresses of these API servers, right? Because they could come and go at any given point in time. You know, that's just, you know, that's the case with uh, 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 stateless applications right now, right? So we're going to need a load balancer in front of that, right? So our, our front end would talk to that. And then our load balancer will uh, take care of uh, balancing the uh, traffic. Oop. Yeah, if I could just copy that, right? Balancing it across uh, all the available uh, API servers that we have, right? So we're gonna draw it that way. Okay, I didn't. Looks like I didn't center this enough. All right, we need to center this. Whatever. Okay. So right, uh, so that's uh, front end uh, static page. We need a load balancer to load balance the uh, um, uh, traffic between the uh, various API server instances. Uh, and then the next thing that we need to have, of course, is our database. And we can use uh, this thing over here, right? So we'll just have a database over here, right? Center that, and all of our uh, all of our API servers. Uh, would uh, connect to this database, right? So that's how they uh, they are able to share data uh, with each other. Okay, so far, you know, it's, it's just your ordinary run-of-the-mill uh, three-tier application, right? But we did mention that we want to have uh, an HA database, so we need to have, like, a warm standby here. Right. Warm standby. So uh, our database is uh, constantly replicated uh, into uh, our um, uh, in our uh, warm standby, right? Now uh, we could get more complex than this, like for example, create uh, multiple read-only replicas of our database so that 
you know, in case the, the read load uh, in our business logic gets too high for the single database, then we can reroute the read only request to, um, you know, those read only uh, replicas. But let's not do that right now. Uh, let's, you know, let's just focus on uh, a simple uh, a three tier web application so that we can focus more on the environment architecture, right? So uh, that is uh, that is basically what uh, our application will be uh, will will look like uh, when it's deployed to the environment. So do that. All right. Cool. All right. So the next part is we're going to uh, design our um, environment architecture. So basically, you know, how would it look like uh, on AWS um, this environment where we're going to deploy our application? All right. So we'll start another drawing over here. Now, um, you know, typically, you know, you would use a VPC uh, to place all of your resources in, right? So, and that VPC is bound to a region. So let's just say uh, I tend to use US West too, over here, right? So that's our region, right? Uh, I'll change that up here. All right. So that'll be our region uh, let's just expand this some more use some more space all right now uh, in our region we are going to uh, create a vpc right inside of that so let's just duplicate this and then call this our vpc right call i don't know call it vpc1 whatever right now uh we we said uh, during the uh, initial the introduction of you know how how this application is going to be designed. We want to make sure that you know we achieve some level of availability, right? And uh, one way to do that uh, inside of your VPC in the region, right, is to uh, at least use uh, two availability zones, right? So we're going to be using two availability zones uh, over here, right? So AZ uh, or let's say US West two A. Right, uh, it doesn't have to be two A all the time, right? There are, I think, in US West, there are about uh, four availability availability zones now, right? So let's just say, you know, just for sake of simplicity, we're going to use uh, US West two uh, A and US West two B uh, to distribute our applications in, right? Um, let's narrow this down a bit. Uh, so I think we're using too much space. Uh, I'm going to need uh, to use uh, some more parts of this space over here later on. Okay. Now, uh, another thing that we need to do is, well, we need uh, a subnet, right, for where uh, our applications will be residing. Now, I mentioned earlier that we want to achieve some level of security. So then uh, we have to make sure that we deploy our workloads uh, in um, a private subnet, right? So... Let's just duplicate that uh, rectangle over there, right? Make sure that it's centered nicely. And this is going to be a subnet, right? Let's call it private uh, one, right? So for every availability zone, we're going to need uh, a subnet. So we'll call this uh, private two, right? Uh, and this is where uh, this is where our workload uh, will reside. So uh, we would have uh our uh, uh aws uh cluster uh residing here so um let's say our host is going to be you know uh, our uh, worker worker node let's just call this worker one right and then uh, center that right so this is going to be an ec2 instance uh we'll have worker n over here right so we could have as many workers as we need um and uh, they will just be um, um, distributed across our availability zones as needed. All right. Now, um, this is this is not uh, scalable at this point because you know we only we only have like I don't know a fixed amount of uh, worker nodes. So what we're going to do is we are actually uh, instead of uh, setting this up uh, individually, we're actually going to use. Uh, an auto scaling group because uh, AKS allows you to define an auto scaling group uh, where your worker nodes will reside. So we are going to take advantage of that. 
by placing uh, our stuff in an auto scaling group right uh, that's not visible let's see if we can uh, fix that uh, there's no highlighting over here uh, maybe that no yeah let's leave that alone all right so just understand that uh, we have an auto scaling group over here uh, and we'll change the dash over there to be clear right a little bit clearer um, so our auto scaling group will manage the number of workers that we have running uh, in our uh, AWS uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, note that I have only specified the worker over here uh, because uh, our master node, our control plane, isn't really in our um, uh, account in AWS. It's actually in an account that's managed directly by, by AWS and there's just some cross account uh, magic going on so that uh, the master nodes can uh, manage the worker nodes, uh, you know, in this uh, in this account. All right, let's see if I can bring this back so that we can move uh, the worker nodes uh, accordingly. There we go. All right, so we have our worker nodes, um, and then we are going to design uh, our front end and our our we are rather we're going to deploy our front end and our API service uh, such that they are just pods. Um, residing in our worker node so we're not going to see uh, those things over here just uh, assume that they're running uh, in uh, one or more worker nodes at this point right okay cool now uh, we also need a database right so in our three-tiered application that's what's missing so we're just going to use um, to keep it simple and easier to manage you know assuming it's just a one or two man team right we're just going to use RDS probably use Postgres uh, for this, right? So that'll be that, right? Uh, and then we also, we specify that it is uh, going to be an HA uh, database and uh, AWS will readily manage that for us. So one will be in one uh, AZ, the other will be reside in the other AZ. Now, we really don't have control over which one is primary, which one is secondary. Um, RDS will take care of that for us, but let's just let's just put it this way, right? All right, cool. So RDS, prime, maybe primary, maybe secondary, doesn't matter, right? Now our, um, our application will be able to, our API server will be able to contact uh, whichever is the primary uh, at this point. Now, um, having designed it this way, there's really no way for uh, the outside world to gain access uh, to our uh, workload over here, right? Our uh, front end and our API server. So we need something else here. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to create a public subnet, right? Uh, in both of these uh, availability zones, right? So we'll call this we'll call this one public one, right? So they coincide with uh, the private sub there, there the private subnet that resides in the same availability availability zone, right? The naming, I mean. So like that okay right um and then uh in order for um our um uh, uh the outside world to gain access to uh our worker nodes over here uh we need to have uh something residing uh in this uh, public subnet and what that will be will actually be uh alb right uh amazon or aws elastic load balancer or application load balancer, right? So we'll have an ALB there, right? In each of those, uh, they are HA in their own uh, uh, availability zone. Uh, we're having, uh, we're going to make sure that, you know, we, we have two of those uh, ALBs residing, right? One in each uh, public subnet. That way, uh, if this availability zone goes down, nothing, you know, our application will still be okay. It's still accessible because we also have an ALB uh, right here. Now, um, we're not done yet because uh, we want to make sure that uh, our ALB actually responds uh, to the request that's coming in, whether that request is for the front end or if the request is for the API server. Uh, in order for us to do that, we need to have a listener, right? So we need to have a listener for um, the... Uh, let's just say the www uh, site, right? The front end. Right, so we have a listener there. Uh, it needs to be present uh, in this 
ALB, so we'll just we'll just place that there, right? For sake of simplicity, right? Uh, it also needs to be present over here, right? And then uh, in order for that listener to know where to send the request, we need to have a uh, a target pool over here, right? So target for the www. Uh, and these, the target will actually point to uh, the pods that will be residing uh, in our worker node, right? Um, well, technically, it's it's not exactly like that, but let's let's just think of it th that way in the meantime, and then we'll get to the nitty gritty of how these targets actually point, you know, make their how the traffic makes their way from the, that this target resource all the way to the pod that's uh, residing in uh, any of these worker nodes. Now, we're not done yet because uh, we only have a listener and a target for. Um, uh, our uh, front end, but we also need a listener and a target for our API server. Otherwise, you know, how 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 is our front end going to talk to the API server, right? So we'll just uh, duplicate this, right? We we'll make a copy of these, and we're going to rename this to listener for API, right? API, API, API. Right. Okay. So uh, our our uh, static website is going to be served in the browser, and then it's going to make a call to uh, to the API, uh, which will go through the listener API over here, and the ALB will match that with the target. The target will then determine how to uh, route the traffic uh, from here all the way to the uh, API pods that will be residing in our uh, worker nodes uh, right here. All right. Now, uh, you might think that this is uh, good to go, but it's not yet complete, actually, because there will be times, especially when a pod is starting up, you know, uh, where it needs to reach out into the internet, maybe to download some resource or, you know, download a container, right? And right now, the way it's going, uh, it's, it's not really, really going to work because the worker node has no way of getting to the internet, right? So uh, we need, first of all, uh, let's just put it here, right? Uh, we need an internet gateway. Uh, that'll be the way for uh, our uh, our resources over here uh, to get to the internet, right? That's not done yet because the worker node, again, has no knowledge of the internet gateway. Uh, so, uh, and also, we really, you know, you, you can't go from uh, something in the private subnet all the way to the internet gateway. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some resource over here. It'll actually reside uh, in the private in the public subnet, but let's just put it there uh, for now, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, it's probably better to just to be clear. The NAT, NAT gateway is going to be residing there. Of course, you know the NAT gateway has to be present uh, in all uh, public subnets, right? And we will then configure our routing table in our VPC such that anything, any traffic that's going to um, uh, a subnet, right? That's not, that's not a subnet in any of our uh, in any of our subnets over here. Then have that routed to uh, the NAT gateway, which then gets routed through the Internet gateway. Uh, so that's how our uh, workloads over here in our worker nodes will be able to download containers. You know, get got started up and so on. All right, so that's that's basically the you know that's the design of our environment. Uh, the next step is for us to uh, create an instance of this environment, and we'll we'll do that using uh, Terraform. All righty, so um, that's how far we are in this uh, first video. I'm actually going to split this uh, series into multiple videos. That way, you know it's easier for you to track which part of the uh, series you're you are in, right? Right? Uh, it's easier for, to do that with you know small bite-sized uh, videos rather than one long video that you have to pause and then go back to again at some point, right? So uh, let me know what you think about the design so far. Uh, and if you're interested to know about how we're going to implement this, right? Uh, let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to know when the next video of this series is available, you know, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.